So yeah, let's start with the interface. So as you go to the bot section here, you uh, as always see your active strategies. So these are the strategies that I've been holding for quite a long time. So you can see some Bitcoins, Quantum for three months already and new ones is like 21 hours only. So let's say I want to analyze the performance of my Solana trading to USDT bot because you can see this spike up was insane. So let's see if the performance of the bot has outperformed the HODL strategy or not. Let's see. So we go here, details. Now we can see the bot profit. That's like the exact amount of money in USDT the bot made. You can also switch to Sol to see what's the profit and loss made by bot in Sol. But since we are trading to USDT, for me it makes sense to look at USDT uh, metric. We also have now initial fans displayed. So at the time when I launched the bot, this was my exact allocation. 7.22 Solana and 329 USDT. So if I would stick with this initial balance in my portfolio, then right now the value change would be 261 USDT. So this is compared to the current funds that I have. So the bot been trading, it's been selling and buying Solana. Right now it has the balance of 2.3 Solana compared with the initial one of 7.2 Solana and 532 USDT and the current value of this whole holdings is exactly 700 and the total PL is $103 so that's the bot profit plus the value change of the base currency in this case that's the value change of the Solana coin because you know that uh, the base currency can either appreciate or depreciate in its value so this affects your investment change so that's why you see this value constantly fluctuating and it turns out that according to this trading setup if I would stick with the amount of 7.2 Solana in my portfolio instead of launching the bot then I would make more money than what I made with current uh, strategy. So that's exactly that you can see here, the value change of your HODL strategy compared with the bot strategy. For example, if you look at ALGA, in my case, my bot strategy made me more money, 112 compared with $73. So. That's the thing, like you can pair the results of your initial funds and what would be the outcome if you would just hold all that amount of ALGO and that amount of USDT in your portfolio. And what would be the return if you launch the bot with these settings? The current uh, balance would be this one. And let's check. Yeah, I mean, all good, let's go. So, as you can see, my bot profit, like the, the total return, bot profit plus the value change, that's the return, 112. Compared with the $73 that I would otherwise make if I would just hold that amount of ALGO and USDT. Um, so, I mean, this is how you analyze performance, you can, select any strategy you have like let's say uh, Bitcoin so that was my initial balance like back at that time three months ago as you can see let's let me show you so that was the time when Bitcoin was falling and I entered the market you see right here on the on the market fall so I thought that I should have buy the deep strategy and buy the deep strategy looks like this let me just show you with let's say this example um, it's not switching for some reason let's choose Arab to BNB okay let's yeah oh come on stop lagging so let's assume that I think that the price will fall 
and I want to buy the dip. So that's the trading setup that I would stick with. Just uh, green light, just uh, limit by orders here. You see, the allocation would be just in the quote currency. So that's the same thing I did on Bitcoin. I thought it's gonna fall down to 30k, so that's why I set only uh, limit buy orders at that time. So that's why you can see in specifications that zero Bitcoins at that time and the total of 349 USDC as a quote currency allocated to buy the dip. And that's the outcome. Right now you see this balance of Bitcoins and the balance of USDC. So thanks to this strategy that I decided to stick with, I made in total 218 USDT, sorry USD, and that is compared with the result that I would otherwise have if I would just had zero bitcoins on my balance okay so that's the thing you can use just to compare whether or not your mm, bot performance is justified compared with the simple hodl strategy okay um, so the best performing asset let's see I can uh, sort my column by the best performer and that's Bitcoin and quantum in this case notice that now uh, the investment change is different so let's say I switch to um, euro now you see that investment change is different it's because it adjusts the value depending on the native currency that you select okay um, let's say Canadian dollar so that would be the result okay so since we make money in USDC it converts pretty much this USDC in Canadian dollar and shows you the investment change in that case you can also see that in other currencies like let's say um, maybe ruble yeah you see that's that changes and you can also sort your bots by the value you investment in let's say in rubles or again maybe in USD that's that's something that you can always change depending on your native currency uh, preference um, so what else can we see here let's go back to maybe quantum okay so you see with the quantum I can instantly see that the strategy I used and thanks that I was clever enough to allocate that amount of quantum and that amount of BUSD three months ago to this strategy so that eventually it brought me $167 which is like almost 40% uh, of the total investment change so you can see the difference between the bot profit and the current funds so you see the bot profit is by almost 3% well actually 2.5% um, bigger than the current funds that's because current funds takes into account the value change of the base currency so right now it seems like the value of quantum has depreciated a bit so that's why I have 39.5 percent but in general current funds it calculates the bot profit this amount plus the investment change so that's why you see bot made 178 dollars but the total PL is just 167 so that means that we are right now losing value of quantum in 11 dollars approximately so pretty much we are affected by the fluctuation of quantum as we have 10.76 quantums in this exact strategy and well as always you can always check the performance of your bot on a daily basis you can see uh, pretty much the average return so well it looks like around two point and half dollars per day and you can also see that in average daily results in in the percentage okay the total value change it also fluctuates because again uh, some strategies they are exposed to the value change of the base currency so that's why this value fluctuates bots they make you money in the quote currency so this also affects the total value so pretty much you can take a snapshot of total value and compare it 
the results with the yesterday view results and this value is going to fluctuate and i guess by the way that we're going to change a new metric i mean we're going to add this new uh, data input so that you could see the total value change uh, in a way you see it here on a chart maybe so there are many things that we still want to implement and to improve the um, to improve the quality of the um, analytics you get here but uh, you see what we've made so far uh, is an extensive amount of new features that you can see you can see the trading time you can see the total transactions and also you can check the orders statuses you can see show errors only so zero errors as of today so that means that it goes smoothly it executes all of my orders so everything is great you can check the performance you can see uh, the exact data you need basically to validate the performance of your bot and to make sure that it executes the orders the way it should execute it <clears throat> so yeah that's that's what we have as of now uh, these are my results and notice that right now i have only one classic bot strategy which is uh, synthetic trading to usdt that's because i personally believe that this is a valid project it's a quite strong one in terms of uh, the ecosystem network effect and the product development and the DAO uh, ecosystem that they are building, I mean that's that's insanely great that what they are doing. And in a long term perspective, I believe in the growth, so I feel like it's going to go higher. Um, and that's why Classic Bot is the strategy that I utilize because it's performance is going to be way better on the rising market compared with the as bot strategy because as bot strategy is the ultimate solution if you feel like the market is going to move sideways so that's why at the time uh, bitcoin was falling i initiated the as bot because i knew that it's the best one to buy the dip and it's the best one to make me money on the sideways market. So that's why you can see 63% for three months. That's like 21% per month approximately. I mean, that's a great result. That's for sure. So let's go back to uh, synthetics. It's So far it made me like $23 as of today. Because I just launched it. No, actually I launched it yesterday at uh, evening time so yeah 23 dollars that's that's a good result already so that's why classic bot i feel like it's gonna go like this so that's why classic bot is the ultimate solution for me um what else do we have here something that i forgot to cover mm. so according to the agenda uh, da -da -da -da. Well, of course, as always, you can backtest the strategy before launching the one. For example, uh, let's check uh, add it to USDC. Let's say I want to trade it now and I feel like it's going to move sideways, let's say. So that's why I'm going to check the S bot. And let's assume that I want to have only 60 grids and I would backtest this. So. The, the the outcome would be um no actually let's choose a wider gap maybe lower over here yeah and let's back test now so on this time period from the 20th of july it would bring me 5.86 percent of the return but what if i uh, would stick with the classic board instead with the same amount of grids I think it was 60 or something back test and you see the result would be 7.55% uh, so that's the thing I mean uh, you can still use the original tool we have which is the back test to compare uh, strategies with one another so 
The reason why you see Classic bot outperforming s bot on this backtest result is because the market was rising uh, during this period of time. But in general, as a rule of thumb, uh, the s bot is the ultimate solution if you feel like the market is going to move sideways. So for example, let's, uh, let's compare maybe 21st of June until the 9th of August. Let's go 21st of July, actually, not June. And what was the date? Uh, 9th of August, right? Safe. And let's see. Mm, no, actually, no, I, I was right. I wanted to check the June, but yeah, I forgot that mm, the only time span for the backtest is like one month, not more. So I, I cannot check what would be the performance from the June. But anyway, the, the, the trick here is that let's say you wanted to check this period. So you select this period of time and you backtest it with different configurations and see what would be the performance with, on the classic board or on the S board. You compare the results if you feel like, if you see like, the classic board is way better on the rising market for this crypto than stick with the classic bot. If you feel like the S bot is the best one for the sideways market for this crypto, then stick with the S bot. But uh, uh, based on all the statistical results we made and own experience, my rule of thumb is that S bot is the ultimate solution for the sideways, and classic is the ultimate one for the rising market. That's the thing. Um, let me check if you got some interesting questions. Chris is saying yes add more days in the back test well I mean this would be great but don't forget that this would uh, uh, require more server resources this would uh, be a huge load on the system mm, so we always um, focus on the things of the first priority back test with more than let's say two months of a time span is not the first priority. I mean, it would be great, but it's not the first priority. So that's why we, we, we always make sure that bots execution is the first priority that they run smoothly enough and that uh, many people can access beats cap simultaneously. So that's like first priority things. And of course the, the like second priority are minor things like the back test date range extension and anything so maybe we're gonna add more features to the back test just to make it uh, better okay <laughs> yeah so let's proceed um you also know that we have now the trailing down feature for the as bot and the thing about the tra trading down is let's say my LTC to USDT let's check what is going on here so the thing is that if I enable my trading down now and the price goes below my trading range which is here that's the lowest price I have here 135 if it goes below it it's gonna plot new limit buy orders and it's gonna use the quote currency from my uh, available balance which is here so it means it's it's just gonna add more money into the bot so that it can execute more buy orders and uh, at the time when it executes the first uh, buy order below my initial trading range it will cancel out my sell order which I had over here okay so here is the biggest concern you might have what about the base currency which I was supposed to sell here in this order so the thing is that as of now we are still uh, working on this solution to make it to make sure that it's all fully automated and that the bot always sells and buys in in balance but as of now um, it will cancel out the sell order 
and the and the base currency which is otherwise now left in your portfolio is going to be in your portfolio you just need to make sure that you you monitor it and whenever you need to get rid of it you sell it manually so that's the thing now so that's why uh we we we, we i guess we're gonna have either additional bot with the another trading down feature i mean another trading down logic or we might have two solutions for the trading down so this one you see right now is the first option for the trading down to uh, trade and we might make some tweaks and add a second option for the trading down for your uh, active strategy <clears throat> without cancelling out uh, sell orders because we need to cancel out this yeah we need to cancel the sell orders to maintain the maximum amount of uh, limit orders you can have on Binance which is 180 we cannot go above this number so that's why we need to like we are pretty much forced to uh, close those orders that we can no longer hold in the bot because we now added a new one a new limit buy order so that's the thing but we are working on the optimization of this one but as of now it, it works um, in a way that when the price breaches the lower uh, limit of your trading range it's just gonna use the quote currency from your balance available balance and it's gonna buy more and that way you will see that your value is gonna increase because you now added more money into this strategy and it's up to you to decide what's your risk tolerance like down until which level of price you have this risk tolerance so for example if I set my stop trading down at the price of 90 that means that down to the price of 90 dollars my bot is gonna plot new limit buy orders and whenever the price reaches it it will execute it so that way you basically anticipate that the price will eventually revert it will bounce off and it will recover the loss you made on this falling market quickly enough as you basically increase your initial uh, investment allocation uh, it's not the, it's not the martingale system because martingale implies that with each um, price drop decimal uh, you increase your investment buy by like two times and more and it's like exponentially you increase the investment as the price goes down but it's not the case for the uh, trading down system we have it's basically just buys more but not exponentially um so what else do we have here mm -hmm. so as of the visual effects i mean not at visual effects but uh, visual improvements and uh, bot performance once again like the best feature in my opinion is that you can really see if the tra if the strategy pays off i mean for example my dot to usdt well it brought me only 102 dollars if I would just hold all that amount of dot at the time when I launched the bot, I would make more money. But don't forget that this 279 is pretty much um, your pending profit. It's like unrealized return. Whereas when it comes to bot trading, the PL you see here, it's already realized. So that's something that is already in your possession, on your balance. So that's the trick. People think that well hodl strategy is the best one but be honest with yourself like uh, do you always manage to sell at the highest price like are you that lucky to predict the highest price the asset is going to trade in the future so that you will capitalize on this highest price mark i mean it's hardly possible i mean you can you can guess the direction of the market based on technical and fundamental analysis and you can be right let's say 80 percent of the times but um, i mean predicting the exact price the asset is going to trade in in a week or two months i mean that's that's a hard thing to predict 
So that's why you cannot say that HODL strategy is the ultimate solution and it will always bring you the most. It's about the market timing. If you sold at this highest price, then yes, this is a justified thing. I mean, you would make more money just holding DOT if you would sell it at the highest price, let's say today. But um, the thing about the bot, profit, uh, the, the bot trading is that you don't need to um, worry about your returns because every single day it m makes you money. Every single day it um, seizes these opportunities on the market when the price fluctuates. So let's say it swings down, the bot is going to buy. And whenever the price goes higher, it's going to sell. So these are micro trades it makes and ensures that it gives you profit every day. So that's why what really matters in trading is the realized return, not the unrealized return. Because realize is something that you have in your balance already. That's that's it's kind of tangible. I mean, you can use it. You can you can withdraw it. You can you can send it in elsewhere, and or you can use it to launch other strategies. Yeah. So uh, some of you've been asking, what are the strategies? I mean, not the strategies, but the tools I use to uh, enter the market or exit the market at the optimal time. So usually I stick with three uh, indicators. That's the uh, moving averages and the, the volume profile and also looking at the support and resistance structures. So let's say trading uh, view. Here you have this tool, the volume profile, which is for free. You don't need to have a pro account. It's something you can have for free. So uh, let's, can I replay it? Mm, yeah, I can actually replay on the daily charts. Let's say over here. So that was back in the time when the price started to fall in May 2021. So this is how the volume profile looked like. The price went below the point where we had the most volume traded. And usually that's the bad signal. If we are below the most volume traded, then that's a bearish signal. So I asked myself what would be the next stop. And now I look at the volume profile and see that the uh, the next price level at which I had the highest volume was here at the price of 34,000 approximately. And I can even see the support structure formation over here, exactly where I had my volume. So that way you use the volume profile to see where you can expect the price to bounce off okay like this and that's actually exactly what happened if you can see so that's the sideways market formation and then a consequent bounce off this level once we breached 40k so that's the way you can always use the volume profile let's see right now what's the current scenario um, we need to extend the volume profile in this case Let's remove drawings and use it now. It's here. So I'm gonna start with the beginning of this year, January, and let's check it until today. So you see, since we had this prolonged time of sideways market accumulation phase, that's why we now see that most volume is at this price level, 34K. So as far as we are trading above this level, that's that's a good sign. I mean, if we breach it and go below, then that's a bad sign. We can drop down to 17k or something. And I mean, it's not 100% guaranteed because it's a, a lagging. How to say? It's a um, we use just the historical data, and it it just that we can use it to look for some patterns. And once we recognize these patterns that played off in in the past, then we can kind of uh, use them to use as a, as a prediction tool, but you cannot rely on it by 100%. It's just that it gives you an idea of what can happen and you can, based on this idea, construct the uh, optimal bot configuration. That's the exact thing I did for Bitcoin. Once I saw that the next 
uh, price level at which most likely we will see a bounce off or a sideways market for a while it was exactly at the price of 34k so that's why that's the trading configuration I use and you see how it played well so 63% that's a great result and moving averages is something that you can use uh, to validate the strength or weakness of the trend I usually use 100 Yama and 200 exponential moving average we can see the crossover over here that's a very good sign actually and if we select 4 hour then you would see this crossover you see over here before the plunge boom and this was the crossover before the rally so this is something you should always look at um, I mean of course there are different kind of indicators in the traditional market and in crypto space you can even have some uh, custom based indicators like this one which is closed by the way you can have this one created by community members I mean people are monetizing on their knowledge sometimes they put it uh, for free and you can use it once you found your ultimate uh, indicator custom made then you can use it um, some custom made indicators you can find in the beats cap block I think I described a few of them that I use sometimes uh, but apart from that you can also use the on-chain data like the one you can have uh, aggregated from the glass note for example it tells you the money flow on the market and the investment um, capacity on the market you can see the inflows and outflows from the exchanges which can give you some an idea of the uh, weakness or the strength of the market uh, sentiment uh, I mean there are lots of things you can use but do not um, complicate the simplicity I mean you can have 10 indicators but in reality uh, this doesn't help you so in my opinion you just need to find your ultimate indicators in my case that's just three indicators in the combination with the on-chain data that uh, you can have like for example this one custom made like from the VU uh, you see the Bitcoin NFT price and some other metrics you can use as an on-chain data provider and analyze and see if for the patterns and all of that so that's a great thing about crypto is that you have this huge community that is really involved in, in, in building new indicators and metrics to help us analyze the market sentiment and not just using traditional technical analysis tools okay so that's the thing about uh, trading and how you can use different tools to uh, enter the market or exit the market at the right time depending on the results you get from the fundamental or technical analysis yeah I mean yeah Chris you are right then I kind of kind of forgot about the main topic of today but it's just that people been asking all the time and that's something that I always share so as of the other things that I wanted to show you um, it's pretty much that we, we covered everything I would say the trading down and by the way it, 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 it works simultaneously with the trading up so for example for quantum I can have simultaneously the trading up and the trading down and the way it works on the trading down uh, trading up I think you all know it just it just gonna move your uh, grid setup uh, as the price appreciates so it's gonna move it higher and uh, as of the trading down it works another way as I said it's gonna cancel out your top sell order so that it can now plot a new order below the initial trading range that's because we have the maximum limit of only 180 limit orders 
and we cannot go above this number but i think we are about to figure out um uh, the, the trick how to avoid this i mean how to uh kind of a be sneaky enough to get out of this limit of 180 levels um i think we might use something like postponed limit buy and limit sell orders like the stop limit for example that's something that we could use as a solution uh instead of canceling out uh sell orders from th that we have on the initial trading range so this might be a solution but we need to make sure that it's gonna work and before we uh, implement this we need to uh, test this theory and see how it works if the exchange flow can um, keep up with the uh, data inputs like orders that we send to exchanges and the data we receive from exchanges because sometimes and we actually seen this multiple times when Binance itself cannot keep up with the order flow it receives from our Beatscap community because we have this huge army of traders and portfolio managers all of them simultaneously sending a huge number of orders to exchanges and sometimes they just they just cannot keep up you know that's the thing but on our side we always make sure that we have enough capacity to handle the workload so yeah i mean um, what you see now as a as a performance solution i mean um, not the performance solution but how would you say this as a dashboard as a layout you have now in uh, performance here um it's not like the the final one we will add some new features to make sure you guys get the utmost experience and that you can better analyze your strategies and see if the opportunity cost played off and by the way i forgot to tell you about the benchmark column we have here so this one we designed just to show you um whether your strategy brings you more money than if you would just trade this uh cryptocurrency instead uh so for example on this pair you would make only one eleven percent whereas thanks to the uh, bot i made 16 percent here okay and as of the ethereum it's 8.21 percent we can check other things like this one see you see you see here that the bitcoin here is 23 percent that's because we take the data from the time we launched the bot which was back in may 2021 so that's why it takes the price of bitcoin back at that time and takes the price of bitcoin today and that's exact growth 23 percent whereas here you see my ltc made only 20 percent which is lower when than compared with the bitcoin so if i would hold this money in bitcoin i would make 23 percent and but it has outperformed ethereum by one percent so it's kind of in between you know but again don't forget that when it comes to bot trading you have this thing as the realized return and, and in my opinion you really guys need to diversify in crypto and i always follow this rule i have um 50 percent of my total money in automated bots because that way i ensure that i can buy the dip and i can achieve the dollar cost averaging effect so that means that i can buy at better price and i can sell at better price and that i have this realized return on a daily basis so i get this money flow to my balance every day so so far that's 963 dollars uh, i made for the last what three months i guess but it doesn't take into account those strategies that i already closed so it's going to be in reality it's it's more than that i think it's around a thousand and four hundred or something so 50 percent allocation to automated bots because of the advantages you get when it comes to automated trading 20 percent i would say that's the manual trading it's like when you go and uh 
manually plot sell and buy orders take profit stop loss and that's something you can do here in the trading section on Beatscap. but it's a really speculative trading so it's kind of a not the same effect that you get from automated bots that do everything for you and make sure that they bring you money every day and the rest is 30 percent it's a simple hodl so in my portfolio i have some coins that i believe will appreciate in future like significantly uh, and and we talk about a year two years even three years sometimes so for example in my case i have uh ethereum i believe in ethereum in in zero x in in quantum for sure and also things like solana which right now i think my solana is in uh, locked DeFi staking on Binance it just you know if you hodl something guys don't just um, stupidly hodl it I mean you can stake this um, coins and get passive income well semi-passive income I would say but uh, pretty much limited risk when it comes to locked staking and that's something that I do for example for Solana and it just accumulates more of the base currency which is a great great thing if you feel like it's going to appreciate and it's value in like a year or two why not getting more like why not accumulating more of the base currency while holding this coin so that's the thing i mean and that's the ultimate thing in crypto like that's the ultimate diversification because you cannot achieve diversification uh, by having multiple coins in your portfolio because most of them are interrelated I mean they move in tandem whenever Bitcoin rises Litecoin rises and that's not what you want to see diversification is is when basically coins are not related to one another and it's hard to find I mean it's hard to construct construct the portfolio which would be fully diversified in the traditional way so that's why I believe that the best diversification can be achieved by having multiple strategies. So 50% in automated bots, 22 manual bots, oh sorry, manual trading and 30% just hodl coins. That's the trick. Okay. So, let's see what else we have here. Um questions. Yeah, well, as of now trailing down works on the uh, as bot it's just that since on the classic board we have a different um, approach we are still testing the trading down um, but yeah I mean that's something you will see for the classic bot and don't forget that we also have uh, futures trading you can trade long and you can trade uh, on the folly market by shorting it okay but don't forget about the leverage because the more leverage you take the higher is the risk because you borrow more money and that means that in order for the exchange to afford this level of borrowing you need to have enough of the margin on your account to justify the uh, borrow rate you select um, let's let's check Binance. Oh, by the way, here's the trick for you guys. If you have multiple accounts, let's say Binance and maybe Huobi, and 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 you can see that on Huobi you can trade Ethereum, and on Binance you can also trade Ethereum. So, on Huobi, requirements for the for trading are lower than on the Binance so sometimes you can see that actually let's let's do it now let's check uh, let's say algo no I think no I think I have algo already ah yeah to so USDT and let's say I want to allocate 300 USDT and in order to do that the maximum level of uh, amount of grid levels I can have is 30 okay but what about same oh yeah, I I I hope we have it on Binance. Let's check. Oh yeah. Oh no, we don't have it. Okay, then let's play with Ethereum in this case. Yeah, my bad. I should have checked it on Binance at first. Yeah, I think we have other on both exchanges. 
So let's say this trading setup. And let's say only 300 USD. Yeah, 15 grid levels is what I can afford. But what about Ada on Huobi? And we go like this. And I think the upper price was around this level. And let's allocate 300. So you see, I can have more grid levels, like 30 grid levels, compared with the fewer number of grid levels that I can afford on, on Binance. You see, requirements here are lower than on Binance. So if you want to trade Cardano to USDT, then you should stick with Huobi in this case, because their requirements are more uh, like um, less rigid than on, on Binance, I mean, less strict. So that's why you can play with more grid levels if you want to achieve this high frequency trading rate. So that's the trick. Also, you know that you can only trade one uh, crypto. So let's say I have Bitcoin USDC. I cannot launch the uh, like another bot on the same crypto pair. But the trick is that you can trade Bitcoin to another um, stable coin. So instead of USDC, you can trade to USDT. So that's the trick. It's pretty much the same as trading to USDC, except the fact that the liquidity on these pairs is different. Um, so, I mean, USDT is the top stable coin as of today, but uh, in order to have several strategies, launched simultaneously yeah you can play with different stable coins so that's the trick so on, on bitcoin we have tusd that's one stable coin usdt that's the second one usdc i guess we also have DAI, i guess yeah busd i mean around five or even six stable coins so you can have simultaneously six uh strategies trading on on bitcoin it's just that the stable coin is different but pretty much the same chart layout because it's it's just the stable coin that you switch okay so pretty much that's what i wanted to show you today uh, what about futures bots mm, it's always game time is asking are you planning on locking down trading down behind the most expensive plan i honestly uh i don't know so i cannot answer on, the, on this question maybe paul can answer if not then maybe that's something that we cannot share as of now but i mean we always make sure that you get the utmost experience of course, I mean, it's like in, in a democracy, you you cannot have all people satisfied simultaneously, right? So it's that's why some of you will always say that it's unfair to have this in this plan and not to have that in this plan. But we try to reach consensus here all the time to make sure that the vast majority of you guys are satisfied with the uh, packages that we have. Uh, sub I mean subscription plans so but uh, speak up I mean share your concerns uh, you can always leave your feedback in the comment section below this video you can always reach out to the support and share your concerns and I and, and exchange your ideas and we always uh, consider your feedback and always make sure that you guys get the utmost experience that's the thing that's the thing about Beatscap full transparency and integrity in that sense we always want to get your feedback uh, Chris I'm not sure if I understand the question like can the bot be changed you mean uh, changed to what uh, different uh, grid setup or what do you mean so the profit gets added to the bot yes it always so the value you see here it's like I started with a thousand dollars on uh, synthetics today but as of now it's already thousand and eighteen so that's the bot profit plus the value change of my SNX so if you see bot profit three dollars that means that the value changed by fifteen dollars okay uh, 
Yeah, Chris, I mean, with the trading down feature, we are still uh, figuring out, well, different options you can use so that you could switch to different uh, trading down opportunities. I mean, as of now, the trading down, it just accumulates more as the price plunges. So it basically adds more money into the strategy from your available balance in that way. But uh, it cancels out those sell orders on top. So it means that you are left with this base currency that you need now to sell manually if you want to. But we are looking for better solution. And uh, no, I would say not the better solution, but um, to have different solutions so that you could use um, different trading down options depending on the strategy you want to have. So, so I believe that we will have this trading down feature there. You won't need to cancel out your sell orders as the price goes lower. And another one, which is the current version of the trading down would be the second option. Uh, it's, it's just that only a few weeks passed since the implementation of the trading down feature and even me myself I'm still playing with this feature and trying to figure out uh, kind of the ultimate uh, strategy when you should stick with the trading down but uh, as of now I found it useful on the market scenarios where I see the price falling and I want to buy the deep and I have enough on my balance extra money to accumulate I don't want to close my bot. I don't want to set another strategy on this crypto. Instead, I will just let it trail down and that way it will buy the dip further down. Um, yep, uh, that's okay. That's that's pretty much it. If you guys have some um, questions, some I mean, brilliant questions and answers, or if you come up with some questions after this webcast, then feel free to reach out here. You can uh, even uh, left your comment in the comment section below this video. You can watch previous webcasts to um, get more idea of how to trade and what are the tricks you can use. You can find ready-made strategies on Beatscap um, blog, like for the bots. You can have it here based on uh, some patterns. You go to trading bot and here you have automated strategies part one for example so you can uh, grab it test it and see if it works for you okay so pretty much that's it and i uh, really appreciate all of you coming and yeah we we continue working on new features we still continue working on the trading down i think we will have some deviations i think we will have some uh, forks as the term you use in crypto of out of the initial trading down that we have now and we will have some other things you can use like different trading down logics that you can use because uh, for different scenarios you require different strategies that's the thing <laughs>